Hallelujah. Women want right. to love the women. They whip out of natural order, glory to God. Hallelujah. Once they entertain a spirit so long, hallelujah, they whip outside the natural order that God had created. Male and female, hallelujah. To be fruitful and multiply. To love one another, glory to God. He didn't tell you to entertain a lust of a, a, a man loving a man, hallelujah, and a woman loving a woman. He didn't tell you to entertain that. That is a negative spirit, glory to God. Yeah. But a proper family structure that God created, they were ignored every single time. Pretty much straight from the Lord. Amen. Praise Lord, you like hey, Lord. I want to deal with right now about, you know, signing the inner churches today and how, like, why so many of them. It's because the leadership. Yes. You know, you know, the congregation is based on the type of leadership it has. So, some likes to come to church through the prophets, you know, that God have not sent. You know, they compromise. They compromise to be sun mice. Or they, again, like I said, you know, they're afraid of them. And they let them in these churches. I mean, where do sun mice pastors come from? I mean, years, like maybe 20, 30 years ago, I mean, how many sun mice pastors was recognized in America? Hardly none. But look at it now. So many, so many sun mice pastors preaching the love of God. And they not even save themselves. Now, I want to dig into James chapter 2 again for the Sodomites and the preachers that allow Sodomites in the church. And I'll pick up in verse 16. And if one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warned and feel, not withstanding, you give them, not those things which are needful to the body. What thou profit? Even so, faith, if it have not worked, it is dead, being alone. You can say, repeat after me. You can speak in tongues all you want. You can say Jesus with your mouth. But if you disobey in the Bible, God said, sign me is wrong, and it's worthy of death, and you committing that sin, you ain't saved. Yeah. So why are you that preacher? I've been in the church. You wasting your time coming to a church unless you repent. I mean, faith is by your words. Yes. Now, I want to drop down to verse 19. Thou believe that there is one God. Thou does it well. The devils also believe the trumpet. I mean, even the Sodomites, well, whoever, the devil believed that, you know, God is real. But is he saved? Is he saved? No. So the difference between the people that have the faith and people that don't have faith is by works. You have to prove something. And if you ain't able to prove it, then, you know, it's going to show your character whether or not you are simple unto the Lord or not. So that's why you got to go to the Bible. Because the Bible proves to the individual whether or not the individual is saved. Now, God said this thing is wrong. Who you say is right? Who is you? Who we going to trust in, God or man? I trust in God. And I don't trust in no uh, son of my preacher. I don't trust no sissy. I don't, and I don't trust these other people telling lies on, on God and marketing. Talking about, uh, you know, God is love and, and God loves everybody, even the son of mice. Do you know how much of a bigger door that's going to open? Yeah. I mean, it won't be no difference between holy and profane. I mean, it'd be a bunch of chaos, which is going on right now. So I thank God for true life. I thank God for the prophet that don't come to I thank God for the ministers that don't compromise. We don't, you know, we don't, you know, compromise. We don't, you know, sugarcoat it and all that. We tell you what thus said the Lord. Unlike these other preachers, I mean, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. You know, say if you, you know, you get hurt and you get a little cut. I mean, you know. The mother want to get the alcohol, but the kid don't quite want the alcohol. They just want to put a little bandage over it. But what happens when you uncover the bandage? There's still going to be dirt and bacteria there. Amen. So you got to take the alcohol, whether you like it or not. And same thing spiritually with the world. It may hurt your little so-called gay pride, but you got to humble yourself and come out like that. So you can be clean. Because the Word of God is going to... It, it delivers you. That's what it's here for, to deliver you. I'm going to tell God to make it to his own kingdom. I mean, just mockery. Ah, oh, man. It, it escaped my mind, but pretty much just the whole thing. Let me just kind of put it here for a minute. Where the elder left off. The principle of good and evil is to identify clearly whether or not you're in order with God's order 
on his his word. Now here again in uh, Paul's clarity on 1 Corinthians 16, 11. Some of you were like this. In other words, he's saying uh, the Sodomites, uh, the opportunity to be forgiven and declared righteous through Jesus Christ, Paul continues in 1 Corinthians 6 and 11, to say some of you, that's past tense, were like this. The Corinthian church evidently contained former Sodomites who had been converted. Further, more Paul adds of them, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by yes. the Spirit of God. The Sodomite who repents and believes receives the same cleansing, sanctification, and justification as every other believer who turns from sin. Now, this is the part that they will teach you, and this is how the Sodomite came into the church, because they were teaching out of order that this repeating a verse in Romans uh, 10 and 10, that automatically meant you were saved without any type of repentance. Repentance was the last instructional teaching God gave from Bethany uh, over in, uh, what was that? Luke, Luke 24, 47. Yeah. That repentance and remission of sin be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Repentance and remission of sins. Remission of sins and repentance is not being taught today. All they tell you is repeat these words. But brothers and sisters, you can repeat words all you want. But if you don't repent in your heart, and repent means a change of life. You've got to change your course of direction. And when you change your course of direction through the Holy Ghost in dwelling, then you live according to the life God has instructed again in the Holy Scriptures. So if there's no change in the individual, then that person is still the same individual. Get baptized a hundred times. But if you don't change, then there's no change in you spiritually first, then physically, then brothers and sisters, there is no change and there is no forgiveness of sin where there is no repentance. Amen. 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 Romans 13, beginning at verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of, are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore res resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not terror, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. In verse 3, uh, focusing on the first sentence, for rulers are not a terror to good works. So you leaders, uh, as Elder Marshall brought out, the, and the, fa the false prophets or the, these ministers in the churches, you're not supposed to be a terror to good works. You're not supposed to defy good works or bring out um, this sin and try to, um, and by doing that, by... Uh, be acquiescing to homosexuality by acquiescing to all uh, the sinfulness that's coming into the church, specifically homosexuality, saying, oh, God still loves you, then you're a terror to good works. You are a terror, but you're not supposed to be. But because you do and uh, disobey God's word, you are a terror to good works. It Amen. says, but you're supposed to be speaking against this evil. You're supposed to be a terror to the evil. They're supposed to be afraid of you. It says, without then not be afraid of the power. Amen. You don't have any fear of God, so you go and you acquiesce or you assimilate with the homosexual. You're more afraid of them. And again, like Obama and these people in high places, you're more afraid of the homosexual than you are of God. Amen. Well, that's foolish. That's crazy. When you appoint all these homosexuals into um, leadership, Amen. Positions, praise the Lord, because you're not a fear. You don't have a fear of God. You're resisting the power of God. But like the word says, you resist the power of God. You bring to yourself damnation. And I want to jump over to Romans 16 and 17. And we bring this out a lot. But again, it's a warning to the church. Now I beseech you, church, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. And that's what we're doing. We're bringing, amen, we're doing what God said to. We're marking them, which cause divisions and offenses. This is allowing homosexuality into the church. Amen. And like the elder said, if you're coming in to repent, fine, we welcome you. Come on in. You come in one way, you leave a different way, praise the Lord. Because you learn the principles. Amen. 
And then if you have allowed them to come in, they take over, they get in the choir stand or the or they begin to play the organ, direct the choir, now they're in the pulpit standing behind the podium trying to preach to somebody. And God has not 